Hello people and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Elizabeth and I am an avid book reader and that is the topic of today's video. I have always loved books and I've always loved reading since I was in elementary school but I hadn't really got back into reading as an adult until this year. So today we are going to be talking about the books that I read in 2023. Originally, at the beginning of this year in January, I had set out to read three books. I ended up reading 10 books this year, which I am super, super excited about. So let's get into them. I'm going to tell you what I thought, what my ratings were, and if I would recommend them to you to read. Book number one of this year was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Starting out the year, I was not into book talk. I wasn't into bookstagram, anything like that. But this is a book that had gone very, very viral that so many people had heard about, so many people were raving about. So I decided to pick it up and see what all the hype was about. And I am so, so glad that I did. So this was a very easy five out of five stars for me. I love the way Emily Henry writes and I absolutely loved our main characters. I feel like I could relate to them and I saw myself in them and I saw myself in their relationship. And maybe that's why I loved it so much, but it is very, very, very good. I can't wait to read more Emily Henry books. This was book number one of the year. The next three books that I read were a part of a trilogy. So I literally read them back to back. This was the only series that I read this year. And it is truly my favorite series of all time. And that is the Matched Trilogy by Ali Kondai. These books came out in like the early 2010s. They were really popular in the Hunger Games, Maze Runner, Divergent era. And I originally read this series in middle school. And since then, if anybody would ever ask me what my favorite series was, what my favorite book was, I would always say it was this series, this trilogy. I absolutely loved them. So when I had made this pact to start reading more, I had decided that I was going to go back and reread this trilogy and I never ever 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 reread books. I feel like once I've read the story I know the story. I don't like going back and rereading. I had this idealistic look at these books and had always said that they were my favorites. I figured I might as well reread them to see if almost 10 years later that was still the truth. Like I said I read these in middle school and I'm 21 now. The first in the series is Matched. Overall, the series is a very easy five-star series for me. Individually, I think the first and the second book I had remembered a lot about to where I could read like the first couple chapters and I pretty much knew how the book was going to end. Not because you can guess it, just because like I said, I had read these books before and I knew the storyline. So rereading them, the first and the second book were both four and a halfs. Just because, like I said, I kind of spoiled it for myself. I knew what was going to happen. And then the fifth book was a very easy five star because that's the book I remember the least about for some reason was the last one. I probably remembered less than 10% of that book. So it was like I was reading it for the first time again. And it was a very easy five star. The whole series is five star. It's a, such a good sci-fi dystopian series that if you've ever read... Hunger Games or Maze Runner or Divergent or any of those and you're looking for a new sci-fi series, I highly, highly suggest this one. So the first one is Matched. The second one is Crossed and Crossed is actually a dual point of view. And then the last in the series is Reached, which is significantly larger than the first two books. And this one is a three person point of view. So you get to learn about these characters and then you slowly start to see their different point of views. And it is such, such, such a good 
series and there's so many little clues that you pick up on as you're reading them that you're like, oh my goodness, all these dots, all these things are falling into place and I'm connecting the dots. For sure, like my all time favorite series. So if you're interested, The Match Trilogy by Ali Kondai. Fifth book of the year, so this is the halfway point, is Never Coming Home by Kate Williams. I'm gonna be very upfront about this. I absolutely hated this book. I'm just gonna be very blunt because it is not, the idea sounds very cool. These 10 people get invited to the island. They slowly start one by one. They start dying. What's going on? How do we get off the island? The way it's written is just not it. You get introduced to all 10 characters in the first chapter. And so I couldn't figure out who anybody was until probably halfway through the book, I started to recognize names. Their names are so bland, I guess, that it's like you can't picture anybody, who anybody is. The book is written as if the author is a baby boomer trying to explain to Gen Z what it what they think an influencer is and what they think the ways they think an influencer acts and you get to the point where you're just like it's cringy to read the book and you're listening you're reading how these people are talking and like I was physically cringing at some points at the way these people talk to each other then you get into the chapters are forever long. This book is 300 pages, there's 10 chapters. That's roughly 30 pages a chapter, which is insane. I'm sorry, 30 pages a chapter? Are you ridiculous? Like, that's ridiculous. Felt like I was pulling my own teeth out to get myself to read the book. And that's the nicest way that I can put it. And the ending didn't really make sense for me. The ending, is where it got to like the good part. So it's overall like a 2.25, like a two and a quarter for me because the ending is somewhat interesting, but it leaves you kind of thinking like, I don't really know what the ending is supposed to be. I didn't realize until I got onto Goodreads and like started reading the other reviews that this is supposed to be a modern retelling of And Then There Was One, which if you don't know, And Then There Was One is a book that came out, I think in the 1940s. It's a very famous book. If you have ever heard the saying, oh, and then there was one, that's from this, that's a saying that was created from this book. And the premise of the book is the exact same as the premise of this one. 10 people get invited to a mansion and they slowly start dying until, and then there was one. After hearing that this was the modern retelling of that book, it made so much sense of why this book would, did the things that it did and why the ending was the way it was, but it still didn't make it a good book. I wish I had known it was a modern retelling before I went into it, but still didn't make it a good book. I am jumping in here in the middle of editing this video to say that I am changing my rating for Never Coming Home to a one star instead of a, the 2.25 I had originally given it because in all honesty, I hated this book and I would never recommend for anybody to read it. I don't know why I had given it the two stars to begin with. It doesn't deserve that. I'm just gonna call it a one star and leave that at that and just say it was a one star book and I wouldn't suggest for anybody to ever read this. Starting into the second half of the year for books. Book number six was Meredith Alone by Claire Alexander. It's definitely like in a contemporary adult literary fiction. I thought the idea, like the premise of the story was cool and that's why I picked it up and started reading it. But I really like the writing style and it feels like you're reading Meredith's diary, especially because most of the days are labeled like the, they're not chapters. It's day 1231. You feel very personally connected to Meredith. 
you truly understand what she's thinking, what she's going through, and you get flips back in time. So Meredith's in like her mid to early 30s, I think. You'll read a chapter or two about her modern day life, and then it'll flip back to something that happened when she was a kid, and you understand her so much more. The fact that you're uh, you're learning her past and her current behaviors, and you're getting how they connect. It is a very heavy book. I do not read the trigger warnings for books ever. I never have, I probably never will. If you're somebody who does, I would suggest reading the trigger warnings before you start reading this book. Anything from sexual assault to domestic violence to suicidal ideation to suicidal attempt to self-harm to parental abuse it's all in there overall it's a very good book i think i gave it a four star just because it's very slow you get halfway through the book and you're just kind of like okay like where is this going is she gonna leave her house is she not gonna leave her house and then it does start picking up like the second half, but the first half is definitely very, very slow. Four out of five, Meredith Lump. The next one I read is The Silent Patient. I am not a huge mystery thriller reader. I never have been. Typically I either read like sci-fi dystopians, sometimes fantasy books or romance. And you can probably see that from the books that I've already showed you. After reading Never Coming Home and how awful of a mystery it was, I felt like I had to redeem that and I had heard so many good things about The Silent Patient that I was like, okay, I have to pick this book up and I have to read it. And Theo is our main character. It's from his point of view, but we get snippets of Alicia's diary throughout the reading and I really, really liked that because I feel like you can understand and it's Alicia's diary before the murder happened. So you're understanding like her thought process and what was happening in her life leading up to the murder. And then you're also getting Theo's point of view of trying to pull words out of her to talk about what happened. The twist in this book, you would never, ever, ever, ever guess in a million years. Once the reveal is made, you go back to the first few chapters and reread them and you're like, oh my god, this all makes sense now from a different point of view and a different perspective that you have on the story, rereading it. Insane. Highly, highly, highly recommend. If you're looking for a mystery or thriller, I definitely recommend reading The Silent Patient. A very easy five stars. Getting toward the end of the list. For book number eight, we have The Only Girl in Town by Ali Kondai. And if you recognize that author's name, that's because she's the author of the Match Trilogy. So four out of the 10 books that I read this year are by Ali Kondai. That just speaks volumes to how much I love her as an author. This was her new release for this year. She does not release books every year or multiple books a year like Emily Henry or Sarah J Mass. So when I was rereading Matched and found out that she was coming out with this book, this book came out in September. When I found out she was coming out with this book, I was so, so excited. I literally went the day this came out and bought it from Books A Million because I was so incredibly excited. I thought this book was gonna be like a mystery thriller it's a mystery for sure, but it's definitely like a fiction mystery, if that makes sense. It's one of those books that after I finished reading it, I literally had to sit for like two or three days and just contemplate the book because it takes twists and turns and you get to the end of the book and you're truly like, wow, okay, that's not at all where I was expecting that to go. The embodiment of how humans process with grief and loss and that is not something when you start reading it that you think is going to happen in the book and you get to the end and you're like okay what does this mean for me in my life and it's such a beautiful book and it's such a beautiful story and the way Ali Kondai wrote it to make you think it's different than it is is so beautiful so it was a very easy five star because you get to the end and you truly are like, wow, that is not at all where I thought that book was going. Love Ali Kondai. She's got another book coming out next year, which speaking of, 
if you are interested to see what books that I am excited for next year and what books are going to be on my TBR for next year, stay tuned because that video will be coming out very, very soon. That's probably the next video that I'm going to be filming are all of my anticipated reads for 2024. Book number nine and also the last physical book that I read for this year is If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. This is a very, very popular book. And I had been told after like seeing it, this is another one that had went like super viral. After seeing everybody talk about it, I had been prepared to cry. And I had been prepared to literally bawl my eyes out at this book because that's what I had been told. And I did not. That may be surprising for some of you if you've read this book. I didn't cry. I didn't bawl my eyes out at it. If anything, I was more mad at the ending than anything. This book is very, very slow. And I think that's one of the reasons I didn't like it. Not to say that I didn't like the book. It was an okay book, but it was very slow. And I feel like it doesn't, the book's about 400 pages long and you don't get to the good part until the last 60 pages of the book. So you've read about 330 pages of exposition to finally get to the part where something is happening. And I absolutely hated the ending. Could have been so much better if she would have done so many different things. And it was just, it's not something that you expect the ending to be. And I just feel like it could have been different and been better. But I think I gave this book a three and a half because it is so very slow. And like I said, when I finished the book, I was like genuinely mad. Like I felt myself furious at the ending of the book. Book number 10 that I read this year was Same Time Next Year by Tessa Bailey. This is a novella. I read it on my Kindle. I actually listened to this book, even though it's on Kindle Unlimited if you have it. It was a book that when I got my Kindle, I had saw it. I've heard a lot about Tessa Bailey books. It's like an Emily Henry. It gets tossed around a lot for writing a lot of popular books. So this being a novella, it's only 144 pages. I had decided, okay, I'm just going to do it just to get like my toe in the water with Tessa Bailey books. Again, I'm going to be blunt. I absolutely hated this book. This book came out December 1st. It's not even been out for a month yet, and a lot of people have the same opinion of it. It's not a good book. There is literally no connection between the two main characters other than sexual. There is literally they have they don't they don't like each other, like basically. It's told from it's a dual point of view, so you do get Sumner and Britta's point of view, which I like, but because I was listening to it. For some reason, I could not stand some the voice actor who played Sumner. I didn't like his voice. So every time it was Sumner's chapter, I was like a little creeped out by this guy's voice. Maybe that's just me. Because you truly feel like there's no other connection rather than sexual between the two characters, you don't root for them. I don't want them to be together because they have no connection. They have no reason to be together. They don't like each other. And I know this is this book is written by a woman. I know this was written by Tessa Bailey. Britta feels like a woman written by a man. She knows so much about hockey and she serves beer and so she's so cool and she can take it like a guy. I didn't like Britta at all. Was not rooting for her. Sumner felt very possessive for me in a way that was creepy out of two stars. Sorry to all the Tessa Bailey fans. Sorry if you liked this book. It was not for me. I didn't enjoy it. I apologize if you can hear Winston at my feet right now. He's an English bulldog. He makes noise. I am jumping in here post editing this video to give some updates that I did not have when I filmed this. So I originally filmed this on like the 28th of December. 
Today is the 2nd of January and in between filming this and editing it, I had finished two more books. So my grand total for 2023 ended up being 12 instead of 10 books. The two additional books that I read for the year were both audiobooks. One I had done through Libby and the second one I did through my Kindle. Book number 11 for the year was The Maidens. I loved The Silent Patient. I raved about The Silent Patient. The third book by this author is coming out in January in anticipation for reading that. I was going to read his second book he had come out with, which was The Maidens. Now, the three books are not a series. However, there is characters from The Silent Patient in The Maidens. If they are in the same universe, they do cross, like you get little snippets from The Silent Patient. So I would recommend reading that book first. You don't necessarily have to, but I thought it was fun to see the characters from that book in this book. I really enjoyed The Maidens. I didn't love it at first because I thought it was going to just be a second Silent Patient book. Both main characters um, and both of the narrators for The Silent Patient and The Maidens are therapists. They're psychotherapists. For The Silent Patient is a one-on-one -on -one reaction between the therapist and the patient. The Maidens is more, it kind of feels like you're reading a crime podcast or like listening to a crime podcast. It also throws in a little bit of Greek mythology into it, which I really liked. As a person who knows nothing about Greek mythology, it wasn't so in your face that you don't understand anything that is happening. It explains to you exactly all the information that you need. I ended up giving The Maidens a four out of five stars because I really, really enjoyed the book. I would suggest people to read it if they're into mystery th thrillers. I didn't like it as much as I liked The Silent Patient. I also felt like the ending of The Maidens was slightly predictable. Basically, you're trying to figure out who the murderer is throughout the whole time you're reading the book. And I had had suspicions about who it was going to be since like starting at like the 50% of the book. Like halfway through, I started suspecting this person and that's who it ended up being. But there are still twists that I did not guess was going to happen. There are things that they add in that you're like, oh, I would have never, you were never going to guess that, you would have never expected it. And I think that bumped it to a four star. The last book of 2023 that I ended up reading was Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. And this is the first in the Knock em Out series. So there's three books in this trilogy. I'm actually listening to the second one right now and I'm almost finished with it but they're from different characters' perspectives. So the first book is Knox and Naomi's story. The second book is Nash. And then the third book is Lucian. So they're different stories, but they somewhat follow the similar storyline. I would suggest reading them for second, third, even though they are from different characters' perspectives. I enjoyed the first book. I have never read a Lucy score book before. Um, and I honestly had no clue what the book was about until I started listening to it. I didn't read a synopsis. I knew they were really popular books. I saw them on Kindle and I was like, that's the book that I'm gonna be listening to because I needed a new audiobook. But I did enjoy the story. There were things about it that I didn't really like. I hate, with all of my being, I hate third act breakups. Those are tropes that if I know the book has it, I will not read it. And this book pulled a third act breakup. There were things about Knox in general, our male main character, that I don't really like. But I don't like the big burly alpha male, you know, I'm going to tell a woman what I think about her and she's going to do all these things that I tell her. I don't like that kind of relationship between two people, but I felt like Knox had a slight tinge of that, but had enough 
compassion and caring for the people around him and truly showed that he really loved the people around him by his actions that it made up for that alpha male you know big burly stereotype i still can't give it higher than like a three star there were just things about it that i was like they weren't my favorite like i said Knox. There were some things about it, Naomi, that were slightly annoying to me. But I do really like Lucy Score's writing, and that's why it made me go to the second one. It truly feels like you're reading the script of a movie. Like, she's very descriptive with her writing. You completely understand what's happening, the whole storyline. And for that, it's a good book. Back to me on December 28th to end this video for you. Those were the 10 books that I read in 2023. I hope you enjoyed listening. I hope maybe you got a new read out of this if you're looking for your TBR for 2024. My anticipated reads for 2024 will be coming out very, very soon. So keep your eye on that. Subscribe, turn on post notifications if you like. Go for it. The link to my bookstagram is in the description below. I post, if you're looking for a specific book content, um, that would be the place to get it for me. I'll also link my Goodreads in the description below if you're looking to see what's on my TBR and you can get real-time updates of what I'm reading and how far I am and all that fun stuff. All of that will be in the description below. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Skin is your tie to me. A sweet little golden swing.